Hello Kate and welcome to Fashion Exposed Melbourne. Hi, thank you. So today we were talking about the survival of the fittest um, and sort of how important it is to focus on your core essence and your branding. Why is this so important when building your business? I think one of, uh, one of the things that brands can really get, or designers can really get wrong is they start off with a multitude of ideas, with, with sort of a vague notion of what they want to do and a whole bunch of different options of products they might want to make but they don't really spend the time refining what it is that they that they really want out of their business and, and out of their lives really. So I think at the, you know, at the very beginning, finding out that core product, that, that core vision and having that clear focus is the surefire way to get to the place you want to be quickly, quickly and more successfully. So I think it's uh, absolutely crucial. Um, when, when should you define this, you know, this sort of brand identity and Look, what does it, it sound like or what does yeah, it entail? Look, I think ideally it's it's something, and I do this with my clients from the get-go, if they haven't already established a brand then we really workshop together what the ideas are, like what's the bigger picture of this brand, Where who is the girl or who's the guy that's going to be interacting with this brand and we, it can take time, you know, some brands do formulate their brand essence over the first few periods, uh, you know, the first maybe year or so of running their business, and maybe they prototype some products and get them to market, and that can work as well. So it's it's when you would want to take that big step into the market. Where I'm talking big investment into whether it's that online store or bricks and mortar store. At that point, that's when you really need to have your brand clearly defined. If you chop and change and start redesigning logos and re revisioning the brand every six months or every few years, your customer's going to lose their confidence in you quite quickly. Um, why is it important to develop your product offering from the beginning and what should they focus on first? Uh, yeah, going back to what I said before, I think if you define the product and keep the product simple and get it right, you've got an opportunity to have a product that can last the test of time. Um, one of the examples I used was Louis Vuitton's um, steamer bag, which they designed in 1901, and, and today it's largely unchanged. This was a fantastic product back then, it served a purpose, it was well made, and it was beautiful, and it's still has those qualities so I think if people really spend more time developing their products um, and trying to make products that, are, that aren't necessarily out there in the market fill, fill a gap rather than trying to compete with what everyone else is doing. Because that was interesting you mentioned how you shouldn't really necessarily follow trends. Mm. Um, what is why, do, why are trends a dirty word or Look, not I a dirty word? Not a dirty word. I think having, an, having a, the perception that they're there is important but ruling your business on the whim of a trend is a dangerous space I believe unless you are a huge vertical retailer with the mm. ability to manufacture and drop stock daily, weekly, as, as in Topshop. If you're a smaller retailer who is um, working with smaller supply chains, your ability to manufacture product is, is limited. So you, you need to get it right, and you need to do it from an intuitive place and from, from a need rather than from a trend, because trends are so fickle and they can, you know, they come and go and, and they can leave your business one year, hugely successful, but if you cling to that the next year, you're really not relevant, so. Absolutely. Um, retail has been quite tough, and you know, I guess a lot of people are sort of rethinking what they're doing and thinking about change. Mm. How can businesses captivate this new audience? Well, I, you know, I gave a couple of examples today of some incredible uh, window displays. I think I think visual merchandising and window displays, the in-store experience. If we're going to get people in store, and and also that can apply online, we need to provide them with captivating, engaging experiences. So, um, you know, really think outside the square when you when it comes to designing your retail spaces or even designing your um, online content. Um, and collaborate. If you're running out of ideas, one of the main points I made was, you know, go to your local art school and, and find some incredible creative talent and get them to collaborate with you to come up with ideas so that you provide something that captures people's imagination. So we're really looking for that, I think, in, in the oh, current market that's saturated with so many products and so many different options. Because you did speak about connection as well today as a key takeaway and, you know, customer service being yeah. a fundamental message. I think that Australia, we haven't necessarily been known for our customer service over the last few decades and we've kind of got away with it. Um, now that we're on the world stage and now that we're so connected and people are dealing with um, markets like the US where customer service is at, customer is king and they know it, um, we really need to step it up and start offering a similar level of service to our customers, whether it's the way that we educate our staff to um, handle customers in store, they must be knowledgeable about the product, they must know the history, um, they must have an understanding of the brand that they're selling in order to educate the customer. That's something that we I still think we're on the back foot about. Um, 
And I think that that's where the connection point starts, where the brand, is that first connection with the customer, if you get them involved and you connect with them, they then become loyal fans who go off into, the, into their world and share your story on so they can become you know, advocates of the brand. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Kate. No worries.